Andy was going to play us a song. Uh, Andy was going to play us a song. Cue the music, Andy. Fade us out. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and it's uh, Thursday, February 11th, uh, and it's time for Crash and Burn. Uh, welcome to the show. Ooh, it popped up. We have a viewer, so maybe we're live tonight. Uh, last week, I was sick, so welcome back to the show. It's been two weeks since we've had the show. I think... Last show I was out in Phoenix, so um, while I'm pulling up all my information here, uh, why don't you head over to gunchannels.com slash crash and burn and jump into our chat room there. We're all in there. And if you have any questions, uh, that's a great place to ask or uh, jump over onto um, Google Plus or whoever you're watching it so you can check out the uh, ask a question. Or But Gun Channels is definitely the best way to do it, so... Um, yeah, so it's been a while, it seems, two weeks, and uh, we haven't had a whole lot going on. Um, I'm sure there's, I feel like I've been sick this whole week, so um, I'm just kind of stalling while I open up my paperwork here, so uh, I'm just going to be quiet, so. All right, well, let me introduce the rest of my crew here. Uh, my co-host, Andy, how are you tonight? I'm okay. How are you? Just Okay. All right. Okay. Fair enough. All right. And uh, Erica, how are you tonight? I'm good. I'm better than okay. That's good. A step above okay. Yeah, I would say uh, about roughly a step above okay. Okay. Fair enough. And uh, Glenn and Leah, how are you guys tonight? I'm doing pretty good, actually. I'm great. <laughs> how many steps above okay? Uh, I'd give myself a solid two and a half. <laughs> you guys are far above me. I can't even numbers right now, so I don't even know. All right, then. And uh, with us tonight is our guest, Tom, from Tango Charlie Apparel. How are you tonight? I'm about five steps above OK. We're doing great over here. <laughs> All right. I like that. Um, so, yeah, as I said, jump over on the gun channels and uh, listen to us live. Um, tonight's sponsors for the, this month, the show, is uh, our new shop, the Bunker at All-Star Tactical, uh, Forward Movement Training Center, and sticknoevil.com. So thanks to all of them for supporting the show this, this month. And uh, let's get right into it. Erica, what do you got for news tonight? Nobody wants small-headed babies. Nobody? Nobody. So we don't want the Zika virus. There's, you, there's no culture that has that fetish? No, I don't think so. I think it's bad, though. Like, it's not just, like, funny-sounding, like, oh, you've got a whole bunch of, like, little tiny-headed babies running around. I think the problem is is that their heads are tinier, but the brains aren't, so that's a problem. But, um, so if you haven't heard anything and you've been living under a rock, the Zika virus is making its way around. Um... So it's spreading throughout the Americas, and it's been described by the World Health Organization as a public health emergency of international concern. It's already here in the United States, brought from travelers from abroad, um, and it's possible that there's going to be some outbreaks here in the United States. However, it's something that can be controlled. Uh, they're not seeing... It, it's. I guess what they're seeing is that mostly it affects pregnant women. Thus, they have little babies with tiny. It heads. affects everybody. Like it everybody affects gets everybody. sick. But yes, but it's not. It's not as concerning it, um, unless you, you happen to be pregnant. At least this is what CNN is telling us. They're telling Big us thing, basically, yeah. calm the fuck down. Okay. They don't even know and yet. Florida went out there and was like, "Hey, everybody, friggin' panic!" And everybody started to panic. Um, so. They're not really sure. They're seeing a couple of things that are coming along. I would basically say, keep keep your finger on the pulse of this, okay? Um, if you're pregnant, move to Alaska. That's a good idea. Uh, mosquitoes, no mosquitoes are a carrier of it, kind of like Ebola. Um, 
So yeah, uh, I would keep a, keep your eye on this. Uh, don't freak out too much. There are things that we can do, um, despite the fact that some of our stuff is can be pretty like messed up. Our public health apparatus is pretty sophisticated, and um, we are pretty capable of monitoring monitoring our outbreaks and stuff. Um, so if you are coming down with some of these, I can't even find where the heck they went. I was just on what the, the symptoms it's, are. It's, it's like the flu, flu Thank symptoms. You. And uh, one thing they did say is that they believe it's sexually transmitted also. I oh, that's, that. that's no fun. Nope. So there you go. No more banging. Um, no more banging the mosquitoes. You don't want small-headed babies. The end. <laughs> No mosquito sex, okay? Yeah, I thought, you know, you know what, I think that's a pretty accurate news report that I just gave, okay? Avoid the mosquito sex and you won't have a small-headed baby. Right, that's what I got out of it. Makes sense. It's, it's all over uh, South America and Central America. It's, uh, and it really, it doesn't affect you, you can carry it. As a dude, right? Isn't that what I read? It. What I, I think yeah. what I read was that you get sick, but it doesn't really cause a huge problem unless you are pregnant or like super old. Oh, okay. You get sick like you had the flu, but you don't have a small head. Right. Maybe that's what you had then, Mike. Maybe you didn't have the flu. You had the Zika virus. This is like that thing from Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I picture. Right. Yeah. Definitely. I feel like I have a small head because my camera is farther away now. I told you to fix it. I can't, okay? I got okay. these two okay. fantastic monitors and I can't get the camera any closer. <laughs> I'll try for next time. You should wear... just get another head to put in there. Maybe. Use your big thumb. Your big your finger on your shoulder. Yes! Your big thumbs up. I was kidding. Where'd he go? Oh, he's really grabbing it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's got a lot of dog hair on it. All right, I threw it back in the corner. Cool. So, uh, ramblings. Um, Glenn, you and I can ramble a little bit about now that we've gone a full two weeks in a gun store... Um, we haven't had a whole lot of the uh, tire kickers and everything, but uh, what are your thoughts um, on people in gun stores? I think uh, there could be something fun to ramble about here. Uh, I, I've been working in, in gun counters for five years now. So I, I knew it was coming, but it, I've still, it still happens, and it still surprises me every time it happens. Um, I think Andy and me need to make a video. Actually, probably all three of us should make a video of what not to do in a gun shop. Yeah. Or we can just get really good cameras in the shop and just internet shame people. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a lot of head blurring in that. <laughs> Black lines over eyes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll do like the voice changer. I know how. Why? How come people? They come in and they're like they're all concerned about where their firearms pointed, and then they just forget about everything and just throw all the rules out the door. What's up with that? They start know. out good and then it just goes away. As soon as yeah. they go to like show you something on the gun, muzzle awareness goes away, or it goes out of the holster. Or <laughs> Mike had one. No, you don't have to take that out of the holster, and they still took it out of the holster. Already? Sure. Yeah, that was like a, do you want to see my gun? No, it's all right. Leave it in the holster. Out it comes. So, there's that. Did he clear it? Uh, he didn't have one in the chamber. He pulled the mag, but, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I was right there ready to put my hand on it to keep it away from being pointed at me or or something of the sort. So Yeah, he was he was a good uh, warm up for retail. <laughs> yes. That's a good way to put it. 
Mike, what happened to your audio? You can't hear me. No, we can, but you sound robot-y. robot like evil, evil robot. Am I still robot yeah. Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Yes. I said yes. we should do the voice changer on the videos of the shop, not now. That sounds okay to me. Oh. Okay. How's uh, that? Eh. How's that? Better. Better. Okay. What'd you do? I changed the buffer size of this new audio thing I have. Stop messing with shit. Okay. Um, all right, so what's uh, what's everybody drinking tonight? Um, Andy, do you drink at night? You're home, so you're not at the firehouse. What are you drinking tonight? I have that yummy Genesee uh, chocolate salted mm-hmm. caramel porter. Can you still get it? still available? We bought a whole bunch of it. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Every time I went to Wegmans, I think we got a four pack. So we should have got some when we went down to the brewery. They probably yeah. still have some. I don't know if they do or not, though. Yeah, they might. Um, Erica, what are you drinking? I got a bottle of wine for tonight. I got a An Pothic, entire bottle. Yeah, a Pothic Dark. There we go. It's red blend of red. Any good? Yeah, I really like it. I'm drinking it out of my sippy cup because I'm <laughs> an adult. You are an adult. Uh, Glenn, craft beer? Uh, I, I'm not drinking till after my guns and gear, but I'm drinking the same thing Leah is. All yeah. of the $8 beers. Nice. You guys didn't go get some OE? No, we no. skipped the OE. No, it's this is cheaper. Oh. Jenny right. Bach. It's great. Fair enough. Um, well, I'm drinking uh, the last of the 1792. Um, it's a bottle of 1792 in uh, uh, bourbon finished in a port barrel. Um, so it's, it's pretty good. It's got a little bit of sweet aftertones, and uh, I dig it. Um, Tom, you drinking anything? Any beers? I am, uh, I'm drinking some Jenny Bach as well. Wow. And nice. some, uh, some 601 bourbon. Mm. I like it. What's the 601? Is that uh, is that like a small small uh, distillery or? Yeah, right up in the Adirondacks, so they're relatively local. Very cool. Is it? It's pretty good, or? It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I have no complaints. Nice. That's cool. Um. All right. Cool. Well, let's. Uh, I think that's. All right. Well, let's get right into our interview here with Tom. So. Um, let me pull up my my notes, but uh, as always, we uh, our guests uh, we'd like to have them kind of give us their uh, background, a little bit about their company, and sort of how they got into it and everything. So um, you just tell us a little bit about you know who you are, what you do, and uh, you know how you got into it and everything. Sure. So my name again is Tom Tartaglia, and I am the uh, one of the owners of Tango Charlie Apparel. And I essentially got out of the Marine Corps in 2010 and uh, opened up a CrossFit affiliate with uh, a couple business partners and since then have sold the affiliate um, and moved on to a local nonprofit and helping veterans transition and and reintegrate back into the community. Um, But I kind of wanted to get back into the CrossFit community and start uh, something that's going to help with some recurring monthly revenue and some residual income. So I jumped back into uh, that CrossFit community and starting a clothing line and uh, since then we've grown the business exponentially and I've left the nonprofit and now it is my full-time job so I make t-shirts and sell them to a super small niche market and uh, competitively exercise on occasion that's cool where uh, when when did it exactly start for you I think um, I think we first talked uh, are you going on two years now that it's been going yeah, I think about two and a half years it's been going. So yeah. um, started with just a screen press in the basement and a bunch of fucked up T-shirts and long nights and a bunch of wasted money. And then since then, uh, you know, we're pretty much millionaires now. We're uh, we're showering ourselves in money. It's really hard <laughs> to make all the room in the bank for the money. Um, but no, it's it's it has grown a lot. We're starting to to really have a larger impact in the Northeast and and starting to work our way west a little bit too. So it's good. It's huge. That's good. I think, uh, I mean, now is definitely the time for the, um, I guess, the niche clothing line um, 
is that that business model is doing pretty well um, across all industries. So, and I think yours spans a couple of them, which is which is pretty cool for sure. Now, um, you mentioned you were screen printing um, in the beginning, and what what kind of troubles did you have trying to actually figure it out and do it yourself? Uh, we had all kinds of trouble. We, I mean, anything from the uh, I have a chocolate lab who is in the other room right now. He would run into the ink piles and then just drag it all the way across the across the fucking house and just <laughs> ruin the leave a trail all the way up the stairs and ruin t-shirts and everything else like that to uh, just screens breaking and not knowing what the fuck we're doing and uh, you know ruining uh, ruining multiple t-shirts and and pretty much a couple sump pumps in the process of it as well. So um, we hired a consultant to come in and show us what the heck to do. And then we actually just hired him on full time to do a lot of the screening for us. And uh, now we have about four full time employees, which is awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, I'm glad to see that it's that's still growing. And I remember when you were just getting it started. Oh, it was the fucking worst. I never want to do that ever again. <laughs> so tell me about. It says you got a master's degree. What's your degree in? Uh, my master's degree is in leadership and management. Uh, I was at the Simon School when I owned CrossFit Boomtown um, out at the University of Rochester. It's this fancy business school. And uh, I remember showing up one day and, and they were talking about the tsunami overseas and how it was going to affect, affect uh, international trade relations and the economy in, in Rochester and all of this other shit. And um, I just wanted to run a small business in Rochester and didn't really give a fuck about what was happening overseas anymore. So. Uh, dropped out of that and transferred over to Nazareth and finished about a year and a half later uh, with a sweet master's degree that I really don't use that often. So nice. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at your website right now. Uh, a lot of the stuff is pretty cool uh, that I hadn't seen before. What What would you say is your most popular product right now? The um, I know Erica has one of your hoodies. Yeah, the hoodies are always 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 popular, but the three-quarter length shirts are something that we're doing a little bit different than everybody else. Um, you know, we have the Americana shirt with the uh, the redhead doing a Turkish get up as well as the recon. Um, so I think we blend the perfect amount of camouflage and not going over the top Bass Pro Shop with everything where it's just right. real true everywhere. So um, I, I think we walked that line pretty well and we rock some pretty comfortable clothes. So say the three-quarter lengths for sure. Yeah, it looks like the... Uh, um the duffel bag is new, isn't it? The, did you guys sort of design that and have it made for you? Uh, yeah, we worked with a couple other companies, and, and we um, that was actually a challenge because a lot of times coming out of the gym or even coming out of the fucking gun range, depending on what you guys are doing, um, you're going to be sweaty. You're going to have some stuff you don't want to mix with your clean clothes. So we worked with a team and designed the, uh, the sector duffel, um, which is actually from a tactical distribution company. Um, and that gave us the opportunity just to separate some fucking nasty clothes in, in your gym yeah. bag on the way home from some clean clothes. So, yeah, it's actually quite cool and um, you know fairly reasonable in the market at 120 is not not bad at all for what people are spending on their range bags. Yeah, not bad at all. Right. <laughs> I mean, cue cue Andy. Give Andy about five more minutes and he'll have bought something from your website anyway. So perfect. <laughs> uh, actually, looking at my Shopify account right now, I don't see his name. So even no, it'll pop up. Give him a in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Usually he's always buying something when we're on the web on when we're talking to people. So um, now your fulfillment and everything is done right out of here in Rochester, right? Yes, I actually do all my fulfillment out of. Uh, we have a small room in the front of the house that's uh, that's just me every morning for about two and a half hours. I mail everything out the door. So well, that's cool. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna throw it over to Erica real quick and uh, have her give a uh, a live. Testimonial on her hoodie because I know she loves it. <laughs> I do love my hoodie, but why did you go all robotic again? What are you effing with? Nothing. Am I still robotic? Yeah, now you're evil robot again. Okay. Okay, you figure that out. No, but I love my hoodie. It's seriously like I wear it all the time, and I purposely had it on today, and I was like, oh, oh, I can't be the person that wears the hoodie of the person that's coming on the show. You can't be like the band. You go see the band, you wear their t-shirt. Fuck yeah, you can. I do that all the time. I felt weird. I was like, I'm totally, yeah, so I had to take it off. I put on one that I don't normally wear as much, but I literally wear that one all the time. But So I was just on the site. You have socks. I love socks, but they're sold out. 
when we, are you getting more? We, do. we have a couple laying around up front that I can put them back in stock for you, but we're doing oh. a big sale, so we popped them out of stock for probably 16 hours. Um, but we're, we're, we're transitioning right now everything over to uh, an American-made distributor, so nice. we're going through a little bit of a trying time. Um, we're trying to get away from, from all of the Chinese distributors and made in Mexico and made in Canada, and uh, we really want to kind of bring everything American-made. So we are slowly going through that transition over the next six months. We'll have uh, about 90% of, of what we sell will be made in America. So. I love that. I, that makes it all worth it. I don't know. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> It's been a big thing for me. Um, I know, like, you can't help but like go to WalMarts and stuff like that, and you know that you know you're not getting American stuff. But specifically, when I when I do try and shop, I, I try and make a point of it to shop with stuff that's made here. You know, I just I feel that it supports supports us better as a whole. So yeah. I like hearing that. Mike, Let's still see. a robot? No, is it better? Yeah, much better. Nice. Uh, just poke me or something if it uh, it does it again. So, um, well, that's cool. So, a lot of do you have other designers, or are you doing most of the designs and then sort of pushing them into the the print and everything? I actually don't know how to work a fucking computer. It took me two hours <laughs> to figure out Google Hangouts today. So, I have a full time graphic designer that works for me, um, and he does a lot of other work as well on the side, but. He uh, he takes my ideas and, and essentially puts them onto paper or essentially puts them onto a T-shirt, I guess. So nice. Um, yeah, lucky for me, I have a great team to support me. Yeah, definitely, and um, it's cool that you're actually you have people there doing it as well. That's that's a big hurdle, I think, that a lot of people don't understand what it's like to have to do for business. Yeah. Um, it's now you wanted to talk. Uh, you know, let me let me plug some of the ways to get a hold of you. So, uh, the website's TangoCharlieApparel.com, and you are on Instagram at TangoCharlieApparel. Um, anywhere other good places for people to get a hold of you if they got questions or want to check out and follow your stuff? No, I would say Instagram's pretty much our primary means of uh, marketing right now. We're a, a relatively visual brand, so sure. Instagram is kind of where we're sitting and, and where a lot of our uh, um, a lot of our athletes participate on there, and it's really, really active environment for us. So um, that's the best way to get a hold of us is via Instagram. Facebook's hit and miss with us. So nice. Well, that's cool. Well, before we move on, because our next segment's guns and gears, so this actually uh, hits up perfect for this. You wanted to talk a little bit about optics, um, sure. You know, specifically for ARs, um, and it says you're you're bouncing back between an ACOG and a Vortex Strike Eagle. Um, we actually just got in the Strike Eagles, though. The, you're talking about the one to six, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I we haven't unboxed one to check it out yet, but um, it, it actually looks quite quite cool. Um, and, uh, Glenn, what what are your thoughts on it as well? You have a, a good amount of experience with different optics and everything. Um, it seems pretty cool. Like I said, we haven't gotten one open yet, and that's relatively new from Vortex. So I actually haven't had my hands on one before. But it seems, it on paper, it seems like it would be really a nice optic. We literally got them in yesterday. So I really haven't had time to play with it. He's distracted. He's shopping? Yeah. <laughs> I really need the uh, the Mike Line uh, U.S. Marine shirt. Okay. Yeah, I'll set a couple aside for you. So, yeah, no, I... I I mean, uh, I struggle with putting a, a $1,300 scope on, on a rifle that's not sure. $1,300, so that was kind of always my um, my hang-up there. But I guess the, the Strike Eagle, uh, much more competitive price. Um, but I, I also used an ACOG through multiple deployments, and I'm super familiar with that, so it would be a challenge to step away from that as well. So, And Glenn, I'm assuming you had the same thing. Yeah, I actually hated the ACOG. <laughs> I could really? never shoot that chevron well. Okay. <laughs> I could never shoot well. I used to I used to get in trouble because I took it off and put iron sights back on because I could shoot better with iron sights. Yeah. So I the first sergeant used to hunt me down. <laughs> I hear you. Um, yeah. So I I'm uh, I'm definitely interested to see the strike eagle. I'm gonna have to drop in in the next couple of days and throw it on and, and see what it looks like. So. Yeah, we'll um, we'll open one up and and check it out for sure. I think. Uh, I've been always been very happy with Vortex Optics. I've I've used their their one to four PST 
and I've got their one to six Razer HD, which is you know a, a ginormous step up in, in, yeah. in dollar amount. Um, but they're they've all been great optics, and I think they've they've sort of made this niche in the market now as an optics company that sort of covers the entire spectrum of of value. I'll say. Um, a Andy, anything to add as far as uh, you know, Tango Charlie or optics? Uh, no, I I was just curious about the the veteran stuff you're doing now. Sure. So I um I opened a, a nonprofit with a retired two star general, um, man, probably 2011 or 2012, helping uh, veterans with traumatic brain injury and post traumatic stress disorder. Um, and battle fatigue or whatever the fuck else they're calling it this week, uh, kind of transition out of the military and back into uh, civilian society a little bit more appropriately than the military trains you for. So, man, we started, yeah, years back, and uh, I think with one or two veterans, and since then, um, you know, since then I've obviously left the program, but we are graduating probably 20 to 25 veterans uh, per year, and it's been growing like a huge, huge snowball effect since then. Um, Chad Curtis is running the program now, and I'm pretty sure they're probably at capacity with, with 15 veterans in the program. So um, even as we kind of wind down with uh, the conflicts overseas, you're still going to see a lot of people get caught up in uh, you know, um, that transition, whether it comes right off the battlefield or four or five years later where they're struggling with alcoholism or suicide or depression or PTSD or whichever it may be. Um, a lot of times... Or is this local? This is local, but they assist on the national level, so they don't restrict to local veterans. Um, they open it up into uh, into the national um, demographic to help everybody that they can, and they're linked up with dozens and dozens of other nonprofits across the nation as well. So if there's something they can't help with, they'll always refer out and make sure that that guy or gal receives uh, appropriate coverage. So, cool. which is good. Very yeah, cool. awesome. Let's go once again uh, at Tango Charlie Apparel on Instagram and Tango Charlie Apparel dot com. So um, you're a robot. <laughs> I'm a robot again. I was just gonna let it go. <laughs> uh, how's that? Is that better? Getting there. Still the same. You're still yeah. buffering as a robot. You're buffering. <laughs> oh, this sucks. I give up. Oh, that's, oh, that's better. Good. You fixed it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> um, all right, well, let's move on to guns and gear so I don't have to talk so much. Uh, Andy, what do you have for guns and gear tonight? Um, I got a new range drone. It's, uh, it's this little tiny blade drone uh, with a first-person camera on it, so... You can just fly this. I mean, it's it's tiny. You can just fly it between two shooters, and I'm not really worried about. It. They're only, I think they're like seventy bucks. Uh, it's got built-in Wi-Fi, so it sends a Wi-Fi signal to anyone who wants to see the video on their iPhone or iPad or anything on the range, so you can watch what's going on in front of you. Isn't that cool? Who makes it? Blade. Blade. The blade. Where did you? Where'd you get it? Uh, on Craigslist. Ooh. <laughs> All right. And it works? Yeah, it works great. Have you tried it? Yeah. Like at the range? <laughs> Not on the range, but I tried Just it with my out. dogs. Erica, oh. you sound so dubious. It's it's perfect. <laughs> like, Erica wants to shoot it. Like the, weather, the weather was incredibly crappy today. <laughs> yeah, that's why wow. I was yeah, like... It was really bad. You, you actually <laughs> used it at the range? I have I have one of the big drones, one of the ones with the GoPro, the 4K video, and all that. But I don't really want to put that in f like right in front of someone shooting. I'll put the I mean I'll fly this right in front of them, and if it gets hit, it gets hit. But I think you can get some really cool video with that. Huh. Okay. Sounds super distracting while you're shooting a th like a three gun course for that three. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's perfect. Look, it's smaller than my head. So how do you control it? Um, with a controller. <laughs> so you don't control it with an iPad or anything? Too, no, crazy. not with an iPad. It, it's with a regular remote RC controller. Gotcha. What kind Mike, of video is, that... is that like 4K or? No, this one, this one, no. I think it's 720 for okay. this one. 
awesome. got to get my phantom fixed so we can get some video with it. Serious. That little Serious. one that you had me look for, that one doesn't have a video camera. No, no, but I did find it, and I was supposed to bring it to uh, work today so Glenn and I could play with it, but I forgot it. We have that whole huge empty shop right now, and we haven't flown a drone in it once. <laughs> no, but uh, Monday our basketball hoop will be here. What? I may or may not have bought an authentic NBA Slam Jam basketball hoop for the back of the bathroom door. <laughs> I bet all three of you are really good at basketball. Uh, yeah. Really outdoor, so. <laughs> yeah. We're definitely. I've never awesome. even seen a basketball game. <laughs> I'm excited. <sighs> what makes it can authentic? We, can we shoot them? It says it's it has the NBA logo on it. <laughs> <laughs> that that would make it authentic, right? So, uh, Andy or Glenn, what do you have for guns and gear tonight? Uh, the reason I'm not drinking yet because I'm going to actually do a gun. Um, oh, what do you got? It's kind of this kind of a setup for my gunsmith question a little later. I'm going to can't put it in yet. But this is my actually my daily carry. Um, I've had it for almost six months now, and um, the only thing I've changed is I put a little bit of grip on the front of the strap. It's a Springfield Armory Range Officer Compact 1911 in 9mm. Hmm. Um, so it's a little bit different than uh, most nine, 1911s. It's not 45. It's eight rounds in a compact uh, frame. It's aluminum, so it's a lot lighter. Um, I really love this gun, and I've been carrying it, like I said, for... I've had it for about six months. I've been carrying it for about the last three. So really, really love this gun. It's so easy to shoot a 1911 and 9mm. Um, but Mike and Andy make fun of me because I carry an old man gun. <laughs> yeah. I think I even made fun of you at the shop the other day. You made fun of me today. At the... <laughs> was it I mean, today? You carry, you, your most excited SHOT Show thing was your bag of epoxy. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> and old people. Yes. So many old people. But yeah, so this is my uh, my carry gun. I really like it. It's got the fiber optic sight, uh, matte black rear sights. Real simple. Um, At least it's a 9mm. I'll give you that. I love 9mm 1911s because uh, they're so easy to shoot. And I know it's not a real 1911 if you want to be like that, but anything that's not a 5 inch is also not a real 1911. But it's so easy to shoot a full metal nine millimeter that doesn't it doesn't even move when you when it recoils. Hmm. So that's why. And I'm and we live in New York, so we have a ten round magazine limit. This gun carries eight, so I'm really not giving up much by going to the single stack. Yeah. Robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my that's my guns and gear. Like it does it sounds fine to me. That's now it's a, fine. You're, yeah. you're good now. Okay. I think it's Skynet. Probably. Maybe you're Skynet. I am Skynet. Like it's just a robot program to love? <laughs> I'm something. There's not, enough, there's not enough buffering or, or something. You know what I think it is? I think it's a thing on your lip that's... Yeah. Stopping the waves <laughs> in the air from getting to your computer. It's obviously not my Internet. mustache. Yes, it's your thing that you call a mustache. Oh, okay. It, I mean, it, a it's, a, it's a mustache. It's just, I hate it. Okay. So what do you have for guns and gear, Erica? A whole bunch of nothing? I got a mustache trimmer. I want to use it on you. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Uh, the end. I I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't do have. You have any? Oh, you know what I do? I do have something for guns and gear. I've got this sweet bracelet from Combat Unicorn. It's a bracelet that uh, is bullets. Um, they're empty. Uh, Glenn thinks I should replace them with real bullets for backup. Um, but this, these guys are on, uh, uh, Instagram as combat unicorn and he, the dude actually works at, um, 
think it's free Freedom Army. Um, anyways, they're making that nine millimeter belt fed upper for ARs. Um, so they make these belt links and everything, and you can just pull out the link um, and adjust your size. And you pull out a bullet to unhook it, you put the bullet in to, to hook it up. But uh, that's pretty cool. I, I like it. It's it's snazzy. It's a little heavy, um, but I like it. So that's what I got for for gear this week. Can I you get through airport you. security with that, or what's that? Can you get through airport security with that? You know, I haven't tried yet. Um, I'm gonna guess no. Uh, <laughs> they kind of frown upon any bullets. I like it. I know tons of people that have gone through just with a loose loose round, and they get pretty angry. Hmm. Although. I made it through with a knife a couple weeks ago. So Yeah, they really blew it on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so good for them. I think, I think technically any lookalikes are also banned through airport security. I, I, got, I can't remember. I have a necklace that's got a 308 round. I can't remember if I got through it wearing that once or not. Probably not. I used to have the little the Gerber artifact, the little pry bar with the utility blade on it. Yeah. And I probably went through security like half a dozen times with it before they finally caught it. They used to give me shit about a little grenade I had, a little paracord grenade um, that had one of those uh, can openers, the military can openers. Oh, like the P-51s or whatever? P-31. Yeah. And, uh, um, but it's actually approved. It's on some list as approved, so... Um, that's how you get out of the plane if it crashes. You use the can opener. I feel like if they give them to Boy Scouts, you should be able to take them on a plane. Like yeah. Rule. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to throw it over to you, Glenn, again for uh, Ask a Gunsmith. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I wasn't, I wasn't okay. mostly prepared for this. <laughs> Uh, no, so Ask a Gunsmith, I, I want to talk about what uh, we're, now that Mike said, we're, we're doing retail now. So one of the questions you hear a lot is, what is the best gun for fill in the blank? Hunting, defensive shooting, for fun, whatever. <clears throat> and I don't want to talk about actually what is the best gun, but because it's different for every single person. Uh, everybody kind of has their own criteria for what they think the best gun is. My opinion on the best gun is it should be something that's especially reliable. It should be of quality and be reliable. After that, it should be something that appeals to you. Either it should be a gun that you like the way it looks, the way it handles, that you have fun shooting it, even if you're talking about a defensive gun. Because a gun you enjoy, you're going to practice with, and you're going to become more proficient with, and you're going to be better. And even if you're talking about like a defensive handgun, you should enjoy that gun. One of the reasons I carry 1911s is I like the history of the 1911. I like how they handle and how they feel. Therefore, I'm more comfortable with them, so I become more proficient with them. I can't shoot Glocks very well because the grip angle is odd. and I just A Glock is just a tool to me. I kind of like something with some character. So that's one of the reasons I like 1911s. It's also one of the reasons I still like bolt-action rifles. Um, uh... Mike kind of makes pokes fun at my 1911 and bolt action thing. We sh I've shot ranges that were set up for ARs with my bolt action, and I've actually outshot guys on their AR because I enjoy shooting my bolt action, and I mess around with it more often, and I practice, so I'm pr more proficient with that gun than I would be with something that I don't enjoy shooting. Um, so that's kind of what is my criteria for a best uh, what the best gun is, quote unquote, and I kind of wanted to hear what Mike and Andy and uh, anybody else's ideas what kind of makes up the criteria for the best gun. Um, Andy? The best gun is, I think, the one that you can shoot. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and it doesn't I, matter what it is. Yeah, and I think a big part of that is enjoying shooting it. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to get good with it, and you're not going to shoot it well. Um, so I kind of was, what, Tom, what, I mean, what do you think if, uh, is a good criteria for picking the best gun? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I mean, I've, I've had my hands on a bunch of different guns, but the one that I feel most confident in is 
the one that I have the most time behind, and, and that's my AR. Um, and by no means am I challenging you to, like, an AR or bolt action or anything like that shoot off, but I, I feel super proficient on it, and I'm that much more likely to reach for that if somebody comes into my house before, you know, before my shotgun or before anything else just because mm-hmm. – I feel like if it's dark, I know I still know my way around that, and I don't have to pull my Surefire out of the you know out of the drawer or anything like that. Um, absolutely. So. No, and absolutely. It, I'm not saying any one gun is. I, I know there's deficiencies and advantages to every gun, but the one you're proficient with is the best one. Yeah, but one. what if you were like to actually give advice, like like somebody came to you, like I don't hunt, so like. So you would say to me, like, oh, if you want to go hunting, you should use your muzzle loader. No, I would say I would try to figure out if you do have any preferences. If you have no preferences, I've actually sent customers to go borrow friends' guns to see if they even like that style of firearm. Um, like, especially if they're asking about something that's a- abnormal. If, if customers come and they want a pump-action rifle, there's not a lot of people that shoot pump-action rifles. It's... It's. I always try to find out if they have access to one of that type of firearm, so they can at least get some some experience with it before they make a decision. A firearm is a pretty big purchase, especially if you do it right. It's. It's. I mean, you, you, a rifle is a seven hundred plus dollar purchase if you spend and you get a nice gun. And, and most so. people are retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm saying that thing we were yes. all thinking. Yeah, I mean, they, most people are retarded about it. Um, Luckily, if around here, we have a, 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 a business called The Firing Pin where I've sent tons of people to go rent, rent range guns, see if they like a Glock before, before they tr- try it. Glocks have a trigger that's a little bit different than everything else. Um, make sure they like the Sig Sauer double action trigger before they spend $1,100 on a gun. Sure. Um, so luckily, we have that here locally. So I, I've sent tons and tons of customers out there to, to rent guns to make sure that they are comfortable, um, especially with the small pocket guns that people are gravitating towards. Those are really difficult, unenjoyable guns to shoot. Yeah, I, I Those think... Those do suck. I, I think people that don't shoot... Robot! Or, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think people that don't yeah. shoot it before they buy it is a big mistake, unless they've gone and shot a friend's or whatever... Um, you know, the best gun is the one that fits your hand correctly and allows you to be most proficient with. There's How do you certain... know if it fits your hand? In New York, unfortunately, when you're talking about handguns, you can't even do that until you have your permit. Right. I Off still see people that buy them without even picking them up. They say, I want the new Glock 43. And they don't it even used to, it, it used to be in Monroe them. County, you had to have, you had to own a pistol before you could get your pistol permit. It's still that way in Wayne County. It is. Yep. That's the, the that's the major flaw in the, the permit. Well, not the only flaw. Probably there's, one of the biggest. The same day flaws. you can carry a gun concealed yeah. is the same day you can own a gun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I agree. There's there's no best gun. Um, I mean, obviously the Glocks are better than Glenn's 1911. So. <laughs> M&P is as far as, superior to the Glock. Yeah, as long as what it, happened to your Glock that first time that you used it, Mike? Didn't it fall apart? It did, but that's because I was shooting it in Alabama. Oh, it's the Alabama clause. <laughs> Nothing works in Alabama. That, it's because that, you're a Yankee in Alabama. <laughs> Need more wine. <laughs> as long as as long as the gun is built is is of quality and and is a well made gun. Right. Are there any firearms that you would like tell people not to go near? Uh, I there are brands that like if they're coming in wanting a Taurus, what would you do? Uh, friends don't let friends buy Taurus. Um, Taurus. What about, the, what about the tricorder? Tristar. Um, we had a customer ask about Tristar. Is, uh, Tristar makes knockoffs of other people's good guns and makes them poorly. What the fuck is a Tristar? Wait, that's <laughs> what I said. I've never <laughs> even heard of that before. There's, there's uh, a lot of those. Crappy TF2 dot on gun channels wants to know what the best home handgun is. Home the one that you gun. can shoot someone in the face with. The one that you can manipulate in the dark. An AR pistol. 
I agree with that one. Yeah, the one that you can manipulate in the dark comfortably. So probably the one you're most familiar with and have trained the best with. Maybe he's asking more about what kind of round. Would that, I mean, maybe yes. thinking about penetration through walls and stuff like that? Yeah. I, I, handgun caliber is good. Yeah, I mean, any handgun caliber is good. Actually, um, a lot of people Eagle. don't understand. <laughs> uh, I-5-6 is really good indoors because it yes. comes after it goes through walls, and it's actually, it'll still hurt somebody in the next room, but it's a lot safer than most rifle rounds. Speaking of, yeah, the AR-15 has less penetration than just about any pistol, even a twenty two, A high-velocity twenty two will go farther than an AR round in a house. Yeah. It's because as soon as they go through drywall, they tumble and they just lose all their energy. Bird shot's good in a house. Yeah, uh, the, I think the FBI actually suggests a number four bird shot. Like a, it's a, it would be a game load, and if you're talking about house distance shooting, ten yards the most, it's basically still a solid mass of lead. Yep, it's just a big hole. hole. Do any of you guys keep ear pro next to your bed? No. No, no but I should. Oh, that's a good idea. My that was team Al, Al W. <laughs> that was a good one, Tom. <laughs> See, this is why suppressors should be legal. You don't need yeah, suppressors, ears. but um, I think in a shooting situation like that, your ears are going to close right up, and you're not even going to notice it. Yeah. Just yeah, like you're going to have tunnel vision and, and be focused on everything anyway. And yeah. if your ears run a little bit and you're still alive the next day, then you're all right. Yeah. So. It's probably more important to hear what's going on than to protect your hearing. What? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, that's a good discussion. I like that. I was in artillery, so I can't hear anything. As long as we're all in agreement that 1911s are not something you should carry. I disagree. <laughs> I completely disagree. I agree totally. I just can't afford one, but I disagree. <laughs> they are, they can be, compared to a Glock, they're expensive. I need the to put Smith up on Wesson Instagram MMP to all those far superior. I agree with Andy. Andy's biased. Glocks don't like uh, people without fingers. Yeah, they're they're. You have a finger, just a short one. Something. Just don't don't cut yourself short, Andy. You have most of them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like nubs. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Um, I'm gonna throw it over to my new favorite segment. We haven't done this in Shot Show. This is called Leah's Urban Dictionary. I love this. One. So this week. Uh, if you haven't heard of this new segment, or if you missed the SHOT Show edition, Leah reads us Urban Dictionary, and so I, I, get to, I get to pick which one it is. So, I put it in the notes there, Leah, and uh, if you want to go ahead and click that link, this week's uh, word is flat sausage. Oh, you're flat flat sausage. Flat sausage? Flat sausage. Flat sausage. Like a sausage. She's going to listen to this at work. Well, she's going <laughs> to love it the next day. She's going to learn about flat sausage. It guesses what flat I'm sausage. I'm uh, not saying this. This is just who comes up with this shit. I, I, I like the sausage garbage plates. I like yes. sausage patties. That has nothing to do with this flat sausage, though. Leah, right? Erica wants to know what a flat sausage is. Let's I, hear it. I'd like to know. <sighs> It is a sequence of taking off, oh, I hate that word, <laughs> vaginal hair and violently shoving it in the other partner's pee hole. <laughs> Use it in a sentence, please. I do not want to explain what a flat sausage is. I don't get it. I don't really get it. Use the, it, it, gives, it gives you a sentence right under it to use it with. Matt received a flat sausage and did not like it. <laughs> And you forgot that it's clumps of vaginal yeah, no, hair. No, I hate that word. The word clumps? Word? Clumps? Clumps or vaginal hair? Which word yeah. do you hate? That's it's two words. Clumps. Yeah. Three words. Vaginal? No, vaginal doesn't bug me. Clumps? Clumps? Clumps. Clumps grosses me out. Clump. But you have a cat now, so you have to get We're used to clumping. Word in the whole paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anybody up for trying this? No. No. I still don't get it. What What do you do again? You rip a clump of hair off? And, and shove it in your partner's pee hole. Whose hair? Is it my hair or their hair? Whatever, yeah, whoever has the vagina. Oh, so it's vagina hair right. in the <laughs> vagina hole? No, pee vagina hole. hair in the That's pee hole. Right. Dealer's choice. Partner's <laughs> pee hole. Partner's pee hole. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Because this sounds like a bad STD test. Yeah. Like, these things don't really exist. Happy Just Valentine's like, Day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, get some sausage. Let's see some people get some flat um, sausage for for Valentine's Day. Robot. Right, robot. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the flat sausage is a robot? I'm <laughs> turning <laughs> Yay, not a robot. Uh, all right. Uh, Andy, I, was, I, almost, I almost gave this away. Um a couple seconds ago. Uh, go ahead and let's talk about medical prepping. Speaking of flat sausages and <laughs> ripping, ripping. If you if your pubic hair gets ripped out, we're going to talk about packing a wound, but not with vaginal hair. Oh. <laughs> um, Mike sent me a link of uh, a hemostatic trainer on Facebook the other day. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if anyone's ever packed a wound. Has anyone ever packed a real wound? Yes. Okay. You take you take the little four by four gauzes. You know what those are, Mike? The little four four inch by four inch gauze. Yep. And you throw that away because those don't do shit. You need to pack. Like if you need a whole box of those fucking things to pack in a wound, so you take either a gun, you know the the ballistic uh, gelatin, and you look at the the cavity in there, right? Yeah. So you have to pack that whole thing with gauze to stop the bleeding in there, right? So if you you know what a cravat is, those little these things here. It's like a triangle bandage. You can you can wrap something with it, or you can unroll it and make a an arm sling with it. Is that the one with the uh, the sea locks in it, or no? No, it's just a regular old triangle bandage. Oh, okay. That they used to have in the army, and they still use you know for everything today. But um, yeah, the sea lock that stuff's good. The hemostatics good. It'll help, but if you just put a little bit in there, it's not going to do anything. You need to pack the whole wound. So with with that one thing that you showed me, that was probably it. It was a uh, it, it was a little box with some gelatin and a hole and some blood coming out of it, out of like a pressurized rig. It was kind of cool, but it was only like two inches down, so you could only put like maybe a foot of cloth in there to pack it. Um, I've seen people like buy like a whole half of a of a pig, shoot it, and see how much you can pack into it. And that's what you have to pack into uh, a wound or a cavity like that. Um, if it's not on an extremity where you can put a tourniquet, you're going to have to put direct pressure. You're going to have to pack it and put direct pressure in whatever cavity it is. So if you have some bad meat or if you have some extra money, go to the store, buy like the cheapest, biggest piece of meat you can get. And you can either shoot it or stab it. Stab it's fine too because that opens a nice wound. It's a little, it's it's a lot cleaner, and you can put stuff straight in it. And just see, I mean, you can take a t-shirt and see how much of your t-shirt you can put in there. And you really have to pack all the way in there to stop that bleeding. So someone go and try that, and then tell me how it is. Do you know if we can get those trainers? <laughs> yeah, you can get them. Uh, that one system, just the pressurized rig without the what, hemostatic the part of it, it is like $4,000. Oh, my God. It's Holy crap. the FEBSS system. It's like, it's like my Geiger rig, my uh, my Camelback. It's a pressurized pack, and you just kind of pressurize it, and there's two leads coming out of it. Huh. Uh, you, you can make them, but, yeah, they're, I mean, they, they rip off these ambulance and fire department agencies by charging astronomical amounts for these trainers. I mean, you can spend fifteen thousand dollars for it's one guy. He has an amputated leg and it's a torso and it has like five wounds on it. It's got crepitus and 
you know, 15 of other different things that you can use on it. And it's $15,000 for just that one guy. Holy crap. I watched yeah. the video that Mike put up also. Yeah. I couldn't get through it. Like, it made me <laughs> nauseous. I know it wasn't real, but it made me nauseous. Yeah, in Polypalooza, they actually had live pigs that they actually they disposed of right there, and you treated them right there. It was kind of cool. Has there any ever been anything that's made you nauseous, or like it should have had to have been like uh, no. I'm going to vomit or black out or I slipped in some old lady, dead lady's like. Well, she took a shit on the floor for, like, yards, and she died in a corner, and I kind of slipped and fell on it, and it was, like, mush. That kind of made me want to throw up. But I, I, I keep... It was, it was both. It, she she pooped and then kind of decomposed around it. It was really gross. But I yeah. keep Vicks. I keep a, a thing of Vicks in my coat whenever I go to a call, and if you know it's bad, you just kind of put it in there. I had this one 600-pound lady who's stuck in the bathtub, and we, she kind of, kind of oozed out, kind of like uh. she, part of her started coming over. So we kept pushing and kind of just kept going. You try to lift them, and all the skin comes out on your hand. She's, they start bleeding because of the skin tags, and it's just so raw in those ripples. And it's That's stinks. fucking disgusting. It is. <laughs> People just, it, it is disgusting. Yeah. But you gotta, you, you can't really think of it as people when you do it. Yeah, especially like car accidents and things like that. Just you just can't think of it as people. Huh. I used to work um, at a vet when I was younger. I was actually going to school to be a uh, vet tech, and um, I went through the same thing. You stop thinking of them as animals. Yeah, as pets. And they're not pets. Yeah, they're not pets. Um, so I stopped going for that because I stopped treating my animals as pets. Yeah. Yeah. And that made me kind of sad. Yeah, I'd rather work on people than pets or animals. I I I couldn't do that. I guess it's oh, just yeah. a compensation thing for me. It's cuz most dogs are better than most people. Mm. Inherently. Yeah. 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 I like that we're all in agreement. <laughs> Sorry people, you all <laughs> suck. People suck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Most dogs don't suck, but people do. So if you come up upon an accident in the next couple of days and the person's bleeding a lot, you have to pack it a lot. Trust me. Hard. Is yeah. that our homework? Hard, yep. I want you to, I want you to stab a piece of meat and see how much shit you can pack into there. I'll just stab something and then and pack it. it later tonight. Can it be like garlic and peppercorns and <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Gross. No, it'll. I mean, a big one will suck up an entire some onions roll of uh, quick clot gauze, and then another Z fold, and then and that's really yeah, that's, on top of it. In your IFAC there, you carry that one quick clot gauze. That's not going to do it. No. no. That's no. that's the first thing that goes down the hole, and then you just keep going after. It. Yep. Take your shirt off and keep packing dirt and whatever you want in there. Seriously, pack. You can pack anything in there. They'll clean it out later. Just stop the bleeding. Mm-hmm. And it does sound like that in that video. Yeah. And it yeah. smells good. Yeah. Yeah, well, because I, Mike was like, does it actually sound like that? I was like, it can. Because in the video, it's like gurgling and... And there, people are going to be screaming, oh, God, oh, God, I do, oh, God. And it'll be fun, Mike. That sounds no. awful. <laughs> Let's go back to me surviving instead. That's way less bloody. Okay, robot. robot. And if you're going to carry a gun and you're going to put holes in people, you better make sure you know how to patch those holes. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, no, I just got to stop thinking about this. Leah, let's let's go on to your news topic here, Leah. <laughs> Hopefully it has nothing to do with blood. <laughs> um, it doesn't have anything to do with blood. It kind of has stuff to do with well, science. Um, <clears throat> I don't really understand physics. Let's just start this whole thing off by saying that. But scientists have discovered that gravitational waves are real, which is exciting for those of us that are Doctor Who fans because it basically means Doctor Who is real. 
except not really. Um, so basically what gravitational waves are, space and time are one continuous thing, and they are the, they're essentially rubber, and when things push on rubber, it creates waves and folds in time and space. And it's real, and they know that because um, they can track the speed of light going between these waves. This maybe get time travel. Um, basically, what they say is it's really, really important that we prove it. They've proven Albert Einstein right, which is exciting for him. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's having a year right now. <laughs> But basically, this is the the thing that we had to prove in order to prove other things. So it's like the first step in inventing the light bulb. We did it. Go on. This is better than a light bulb, though, right? Well, yeah, a little bit, because basically now we can, with this information, we can use it to study what goes on inside of a black hole. And that's exciting, right? That is actually exciting. Is yeah. It, isn't it just a wormhole to another place? We don't know. We don't know. Star Trek, yeah. Star Trek told me that when you go through a black hole, you end up on the other side of the galaxy. Yeah. Well. <laughs> but yeah. So um, the the and I guess gravitational waves exist between any two masses that move towards each other, but they had to wait for something big enough because the waves are so tiny. They had to wait for two big, huge black holes to bump into each other to be able to actually see them. And that's how we know that they exist. How often does that happen? Not very often, which is why we're only just now getting to it. Huh. So that's my news. Go science. I like it. I like it. If two black holes bump into each other, is that like docking? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, um... Okay, before we do Tech Corner, I almost have some breaking news. Oh, boy. Uh, Glenn, you're going to like this. You are actually a robot? Am I a robot again? <laughs> no. no. No, you're fine. Uh, Glenn, you're going to like this. Richard what? Wyatt of the show Guns or American Guns uh -huh. uh, has been indicted. Oh, of course. Okay. Uh, thirteen count federal grand jury indictment in Denver. Uh, Wyatt allegedly illegally sold guns and failed to report over one point one million to the IRS. <laughs> I knew he was cheating on his taxes. So that that was more of a tax thing. In April two thousand twelve, he surrendered his FFL due to federal law violation. I knew that. Every gun oh. shop that's going on reality TV has been destroyed. He no, submitted, himself. Holy crap. He submitted false paperwork to the ATF to hide that he started Trigger's Firearms. What? Uh, was acting as a straw license for gun smoke. That is super. So he sketchy. couldn't get an FFL for gun smoke, so he got it under another company and just used gun smoke. Yeah, oh, that's so he, gun smoke? He, I used to do their stickers. Yep. They never paid. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Because Wyatt failed to pay income tax in 2009, making about 290000 2010, when he made about 123000 and in 2012, when he made 689000 Jesus. He never paid corporate tax on any of those years as well. So what's he owe? All that. It off, yeah, right? it, it doesn't say. It says he faces three counts of dealing firearms without a license, each carrying a penalty up to five years of prison and a two hundred fifty thousand dollars fine, and seven counts of failing to file a tax return. Wow. Which has a penalty of one year in prison and twenty five thousand dollars fine. The, the thing with that though is like the IRS doesn't just go. They like they warn you and they like give you a chance to do it, and yeah. then they give you another chance to do it, and then they give you another chance to do it, and then if you don't do it, they arrest you. So, the only two gun shops who have ever had a gun TV show are now in jail. Yes. Alright. Heed this as a warning. Have you guys you know, seen The right? Gunfather yet? No. I heard about it. I haven't seen it yet. They're doomed. Really? Well, I mean, 
Would you want to work in a, your shop if there was like guys with cameras following you around all day long? Like behind our counter. Question for Mike or for you? I wouldn't. I know I wouldn't. That's shitty. Hey. I'm planning on doing a documentary about you. No, this is not the office. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's. I don't know. If you, if you go to the, the customshopinc.com, that's the new sh the shop that uh, has the show. The custom uh, Customshopinc.com. We have a custom shop near us. Yes, we do. This one's in Montana. The guy's from Jersey, and he moved to Montana. Oh. Why? You're a robot, Mike. A robot again? Yep. I hope yeah, I can he's got a show on the outdoor channel. I'm gonna return it this weekend. Okay. Stupid. No longer a robot. I know, but I don't want to have to keep clicking this and stupid. And I like the way it looks, but that doesn't do me any good. Stupid. Um. So thank you. No, I'm gonna move on. Thank you to our sponsors for this month. Forward Robot Movement Robot. Training Center. Robot. No, you. Am I still a robot? Yes. Yep. Fuck. <laughs> I'm an app. Better? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you to our sponsors, Forward Movement Training Center, Stick No Evil in the Bunker at All Star Tactical. Uh, I'm going to move on to Tech Corner. So check this. There's a Kickstarter that puts uh, motion into your couch to give you 4D. How cool is that? Like when you're watching TV, your shit moves around. Like how much? Like a vibrating couch or like an airplane simulator? Like airplane simulator. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Right? I thought that was cool. Why, why does it take so long for this to come out? It's only going to cost like 700 bucks. Really? Yeah. But then the, the shows have to... Like, yeah, the, whatever you're watching, this. a movie or something, would have to spit out some sort of data to control your couch. So does it go with like an insert into your couch or is that a whole couch? Um, I can't tell. It's on Kickstarter here. What's uh, Leah, I'm going to send you the link, Leah, so you can post it up in Gun Channels um, so everybody can check it out. But it's raised like 50 grand on Kickstarter already. Um, it basically has the same sort of technology. Remember those like race car simulators that kind of move you around and stuff? Yeah. The the ones you put the little kids on at the mall and just go up and down. Up and no, down. I don't think it's like that, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> like the horse. You put the, the quarter in the horse? No. It just goes back and forth. <laughs> what about the motel beds? Is it like that or no? Yes. No. <laughs> Heart shape. It vibrates. <laughs> Do you think it, do you think Isis has like little sheep with quarters that you can ride? Oh. <laughs> no, they just strap them onto a live sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's all I got. What's the what's the name of it, Mike? It doesn't say. Couch something. Immerse immerse it motion sofa. Immerse it. Immerse no, I get it. Immerse it. Awesome. Oh, shit. It? Immerse it. it. Yeah. it. How Sick. with you, man. Yeah. All right, that's all I got. Andy, what do you, what you your news topics up? What do you got? All right, who's heard of uh, MeWe? Me. Me. Disease. Well, since Facebook is kicking people off for firearms related issues, I guess is the big thing. There's been this whole talk of switching social medias to this MeWe. Uh, has anyone checked it out? Mike told me not to. <laughs> okay. I, <barely laughs> I, I asked him about it. I was like, oh, should we do this? He's like, no, everybody's on Facebook. It's yeah, stupid. everybody's still on Facebook. Why? Yeah, everyone is. Um, right now, they're, a lot of the like the trading groups, the, tr the firearm trading, like buy, sell, trade, you can't, you're not supposed to sell any, do anything with Facebook with their policies, I guess. So right. they're starting all the groups, the trading groups on this MeWe. I went over there. It's 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 the same, same stuff. Yeah. But yeah. you're allowed to do it. 
supposedly right now, for now, I guess you're allowed. There's nothing that says that you can't. It's supposed to be a little bit more secure. Uh, they're not supposed to share your info. Um, I don't know how they, you know, I, I don't know if they really do or not, but it's the news and people are, are switching to this MeWe and I hate the name of it. Yeah, it. like it's it. the worst name ever. Well, it is a terrible name, MeWe. Uh, the funny it's thing all, I, like the Facebook stuff to it, like you know, you can do yeah. posts and. Al on Gun Channel says MeWe is liberal and has White House ties. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. It's almost like we should. The whole Facebook thing is there's plenty of other websites people use already for gun sales. Yeah. Like Backpage. <laughs> like Backpage. Uh, in New York, we have New York Firearms. Um, or Backpage. Backpage. Or Backpage. I'm going to go on Backpage. Hang on. <laughs> um, and then there's Gun Broker. Mm. And Arms List. Are people Does back anyone use Arms Gun List Broker? anymore? Uh, I actually just sold something on Gun Broker two days ago. Well, I didn't know if everybody wasn't mad at Gun Broker because weren't they the ones that when all the shit hit the fan a couple years ago that they jacked up all the effing prices? Oh, was, and... uh, cheaper than dirt. Yeah, cheaper that's... than dirt. Okay. Yeah, because cheaper different. than dirt, all their prices are set by computers. Mm-hmm. And I guess the, what, their, what their excuse was was their computers check the internet. When stuff goes out of stock other places, their price automatically raises to compensate for the demand or something. And it freaked their system out, and they were selling like two, two, three ammo for like three dollars around. Yeah. And wow. people were paying it. Well, they were paying it, so don't be dumb. Exactly. Exactly. It's expensive to the range. Yes, it is. So I signed up for that MeWe. Um, I haven't been back really since I signed up for it, so I don't know how well it's doing. It must, but I want must to. Be- well, I want uh, everyone to know that there are other options if you're, you know, that against Facebook. I'm sure there's plenty of people against this MeWe also. What was the one that What's I had? What's the best option that you guys use the most? Yeah. No. Yik Yak? Yeah. But that was def- What? That's like chatting, Uh-oh. I think. That was, they had pictures or... They wanted to ban it at the U of R. Now you're just saying all the tech words. Glenn, what would you get to to buy something online? To buy something online? Yeah. I would probably either use Gunbroker, Arms List, or New York Firearms. Yeah. Yeah, a local forum. Local forums are great. Yeah. Um, Arms List is great. It's just like Craigslist, but it's gun-specific. I've sold... Prices are outrageous. What is it with people who think that they can get, like, retail prices for their used shit? I mean, it's all over the place. And some is, like, higher than retail because I put this cheap scope on it. Yeah, I've seen that. But I've, I've sold tons of ammo that I didn't need anymore on arms list. I sold, over the years, I probably sold half a dozen guns on Gun Broker and bought half a dozen. It's really not hard. No, it's not hard. It's just hard to find that, you know, something for the right price. I mean, I, I'm not trying to get the best deal, but... Yeah, gun broker is not where you go to get a deal. It's where you get to go to get something you can't find. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Cool. So I won't bother with MeWe then. Right now, I wouldn't bother with MeWe until we get kicked off of Facebook. Next week. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm waiting for. Is like, are we if you get kicked off or not? I like Seeklander. Seeklander's getting his shit pulled off of online stuff everywhere. I see there's other people who are getting their stuff pulled off. Um, we'll, we'll see when Facebook... I mean, Facebook only posts like one-eighth of the posts anyway. Really? Yeah. That, they, they block that many? Oh, yeah. I mean, yes, like if you have 50,000 followers and you post something and you can see it's only seen by 200 people. Yeah, we have uh, we have 2,500 followers. Anytime I post something, it's maybe seen by 25 to 45 yeah. people. It's fucking brutal. So yep. yeah, I've, I've given they're, up on Facebook altogether for marketing. They're, I mean, they're forcing you to advertise and pay for everything, and that's unfortunately what Instagram is going to with their new algorithm that they're changing as well. So um, they have a corner in the market, and they kind of gave you that first taste for free. So now they're charging you. Right. Yeah. And then we'll all come up with something new. 
Exactly. Maybe. Something else will come out with it. You know. Anybody remember MySpace? There's a lot of yeah. weird ass shit on Backpage. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yes. yes, Backpage <laughs> is the weirder, like darker part of the internet version of Craigslist. Oh, it's incredible. It's you won't be I promise. It's Good. basically like, like almost you porn. It's pretty close. It's w- it's way worse in Arizona than it is here. Oh. Are you on escorts or no? <laughs> I was looking through escorts. Yeah, there. It's, it's connection. Cool, cool. Well, I was on childcare. <laughs> <laughs> it's right There's no ads. There's zero zero ads for childcare. What's up with that? <laughs> How many ads are there for escorts? A billion. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> There's. Oh man. Um. <laughs> I'm skipping over the yeah. YouTube video for this week uh, because I can't get the audio to work right. So Have Andy play his blood-sucking video. <laughs> you want to play that video, Andy? Can you pull it up? Yeah, give me a minute. All right. Well, let's talk about the uh, upcoming events. Uh, this weekend's... Uh... Oh, well, actually, I'm sorry. Erica? Oh, I can't. Uh, Andy, you're going to have to do it vo- ver- verbally. Erica, what segment, we... go. What are we doing? Erica segment. You know what really grinds, grinds my gears. gears. All right, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <laughs> uh, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day grinds my gears. This is a stupid holiday. It's dumb and it's made up. Um, one, okay. I I hate all the commercials on the radio, on the. TVs about like oh buy some lingerie oh go to Jared oh Sherry's berries I don't want Sherry's berries okay I don't want my husband to think that I want Sherry's berries I was actually on that that page want... looking for Sherry's actual berries <laughs> those kind of berries would be worth it okay <laughs> I don't want fruit do You're not give for Valentine's Day give me the creep I want the freak. <laughs> I want the weird. I don't want the hallmark. I think it's nice, and I'm in a fairy tale. Okay. Um, I can't stand the whole. Oh, he went to Jared. Oh, he got me jewelry. No, I don't want that shit. I can't wear it. I got kids. It's gonna break. It's gonna get pooped on it. It's 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 gonna sit in a goddamn jewelry box. I don't want flowers. Why? They die. It's a waste of money. Um, if you want to do that, I guess it's okay. But, but I, I really don't want it. No. You know what I want? You know what would be awesome? And he pretty much does this anyway on any random day. I would love, hey, let's get takeout Chinese food. Even better. They deliver it to the house. Score. That means I don't have to cook. Hey, let's eat it out of the carton. Even better, you want to know why? I don't have to do dishes, okay? Let's eat it in bed. Boom! I get to sit in my pajamas and eat my dinner. Um, And then, oh my gosh, topping on the cake, let's play video games. Let's redo all of the Bioshocks. (laughs) That would be so cool. And then after that, let's watch a cheesy movie like Starship Troopers or something fun like that. Yeah. And then let's get our freak on. Okay? A good romp in the sack. A little tussle in the hay. Some maritals. Yeah. That's what I want for ho- for, for this holiday. But it doesn't have to be a holiday. Why can't that just happen every once in a while? I don't need fucking jewelry. Just have somebody tell me that they love me. And I don't want to be made to feel that I have to do something extravagant to tell somebody that I care about them and thinking about them, have feelings for them, love them. I just want to bang them. Show them my goodies. It really grinds my gears. Maybe give them some alcohol. So, yeah, Valentine's Day is dumb. Huh? I think you're my dream girl. (laughs) This sounds like an excellent Valentine's Day. Sounds like a good day, right? And now let's watch oh, yeah. some blood coming out of some boxes. Yay! I thought right, Valentine's Andy. Day was the day we honored the victims of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. <gasps> That's fun! Let's do oh, that! That would be fun! Can we all <laughs> dress up like gangsters and shoot yeah. each other? <laughs> yeah! You guys have a Tommy gun or no? Oh, oh we should get one. Oh, uh, we should get one. Fuck, we need a Thompson right now. Yeah, all right, yes. robot. God damn it. Mm, mm. 
this is the bloody box. Oh, I can't watch this. Okay. Watch this. Back to gun channels. Yeah. It makes sounds too. Oh yeah. It's it sounds like the reason it's called a sucking yeah. chest wound. Push putting your index finger and like pointing all the way in there. He's actually not to... really going after it as hard as he could. No, he's not. It's too slow and it's not deep enough. Really? Yeah. Like you gotta go. Not too much. Like, too much. Yeah, oh, go just quit. It. I would just cut the line feeding it. <laughs> like diffusing a bomb. Yeah. It seems like a task you can't do well unless you're panicking. Yeah. Well, you don't want to stick your entire finger inside. No, I of feel like person. you can't do it with like real concern unless it's an actual bleeding human being. Reality. Well, we. They took us, to, uh, when we were in 29 Palms, we did a training thing where they had actual guys that were amputees and they would put like a yeah. fake leg on them. And then that fake leg would have one of those built into it. <laughs> so there's a guy flailing around on the ground screaming blood shooting out of his leg. And you have to... <laughs> it's not funny. Did you ever do the pig work or no? I did not get to do the pig work. Uh, my corpsman did that, but I didn't do the pig work. We Stop presenting me, Mike, will you? Sorry, Andy. That's all right. I just can't stop. I don't know how. There you go. Yay. No, I, I never did the pig course. Um, but I did the... I've done the simulators on, like, actual people. Yeah. And, and the real thing. And it's... That simulator is actually... The sound and the way it's coming out is... Way worse. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's worse than that. But, yeah, it hurts. I mean, you're you're putting your fingers in people, and that and they're screaming and moving, and it hurts. It hurts them while you're doing it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're. I mean, you're sticking your finger inside of a fresh wound and putting stuff in it. At some point, does the body, uh, you know, release a shit ton of endorphins or something? They'll pass out from pain. Really? Yeah. Robot. Could you do it to your kids, Andy? If, yeah, yeah, if I had to, yeah. Right. But yeah, no, they'll, they'll pass out from pain or, or just punch you because they're, they're hurting them. I think Skylar would punch Andy. <laughs> she would pack her own wound. I was gonna say, she'd slap she me probably out. would pack her own, yeah. She's yeah. like, you're doing it wrong. Yep. She's a tough chick. Oh, all right, so... Where are we? Upcoming events. This weekend, Valentine's Day. Uh, next week, uh, we'll have a show between now and then, but uh, we have the grand opening coming up, so things are going to be nuts um, at the uh, at our shop. Um, Andy, Glenn, Erica, uh, Tom, what do you guys got going on over the next week? We got our big formal banquet for the fire department this weekend. That'll be fun at the country club. Oh, it's a fireman banquet, and you're not going to wear your fireman uniform? I know. No, none of the firemen wear their fireman uniform in the fireman banquet. They just get an open bar and drink a lot. That's kind of late if you're going to ask me to go, Andy. <laughs> no, my wife's going to go. Do you guys Do you guys tell, like, the new firemen that everybody wears their uniform? Actually, we... It's, it used to be broken up into three different companies, and like we would wear this red blazer with this like stupid fire emblem engraved on your red blazer. I'm glad they don't do that anymore, though. So you had like a red team and a blue team and like a green team? Yeah. Is it like <laughs> Halo? <laughs> the, Crips, the Crips and the Bloods. <laughs> and the guys from Brighton. <laughs> all, yeah, all guys from Brighton. The Soches. The Soches and the Greasers. What do you guys so, got going no, I, on? I'm going to spend the next week getting ready for the grand opening, so I'm no of the grindstone for a week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really doing shit this weekend, so it's maybe I'll stop out. in. You guys, uh, it's supposed to be like negative nine or some something crazy. So cold. Tomorrow's gonna be the worst. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow's gonna be terrible. So I'll be outside probably. I mean, they've just stopped plowing Culver Road by now. So I don't think I'm leaving the house at all tomorrow. Is it snowing? No. 
No, we just it's live in the ghetto. It's always snowing in Webster. Not the ghetto. It's yeah. Kind of the ghetto. So are you guys at the bunker all weekend, kind of getting things ready, or what's going on um, with that? We'll be there. Tom- Glenn will be there tomorrow. We'll be there Saturday moving the phones and the internet over. Okay. Um, we'll be there all next week. And uh, if you actually, if you want to come out for the grand opening and bring some clothes to kind of show off, uh, hoodies and stuff, um, I'm sure people would love it. Perfect. I'll do it. Count me cool. in. Do you have any special guests for that that are coming out, Mike? Um, actually, our guest next week is uh, Chrissy, uh, Tap Rack Blonde. Um, she, I got to coordinate with her, but I think she's coming up for it um, cool. to be our special guest, and that that should be a good time. So yeah, she was fun at Shot Show. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. was. She was super cool to hang out with. She's definitely fun. So um, once again, thank you to our sponsor, Stick No Evil Bunker at All Star Tactical and Forward Movement Training Center. Um, if you guys are interested in sponsoring with your company, it's uh, very very reasonable. And uh, get a hold of us if you're interested. Um, once again, to get a hold of uh, Tom and his company, TangoCharlieApparel.com and at TangoCharlieApparel on the Instagrams. Um, you can follow Crash and Burn on Twitter at Crash and Burn TV, um, or follow us on Facebook, um, or search Crash and Burn. There's a group Crash and Burn listeners. Um, if I haven't added you to it, um, go ahead and request to be added to it. But we post a lot of stuff in there about the show. And uh, most of us are our own names on Instagram, at Mike Centola, at Erica Centola, and at Andy Dickinson, and at Leah Naprap. But Glenn is the weird one, at the hip, hipster gunsmith. I'm not a hipster. Um, if you search 1911 lover, Glenn comes up as well. It's just a picture of his glorious face. Right. It's in the dictionary. So. Um, yeah, so we're... Uh, we're in pretty good time tonight, so uh, we'll see you guys all next week. And um, thank you again for listening. Uh, I got to put up like four episodes on iTunes, so catch up for that. And uh, you know, watch the replay. And um, if you guys got any suggestions, just shoot us some messages. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for thank having you, me everyone. On. Andy, cue the music. Yes. Like it. <laughs> he boxes out, Andy. All right. All right. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.